Sarah Huckabee Sanders did an interview with Fox. I'll play it and give my commentary. Arkansas governor and former White House press secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders is here. You know, you're from a state with a lot of hunters. You got the hat right here. <laughs> are, are people walking around with this in Arkansas? Uh, most definitely not. People in Arkansas are not voting for the Democrat ticket. They're voting for Donald Trump. He will win Arkansas overwhelmingly. In fact, I think this will be one of the states he performs the best in. So I want to play some sound of Kathy Hochul. And I say that name purposely mispronounced to disrespect her. She said something about women in politics that I know is going to make you angry. Let's listen. The guys don't require any qualifications. They, they just step up and run. Am I right about that? I mean, we, got, we got a guy who's like, I'm a billionaire. I want to be president. I'm going to ruin the country. And he did. <laughs> so, so I just want to say women should not have to have the greatest resume in the world to start getting into the game. <laughs> All right. So should women not really have a resume if they want to be a politician? Absolutely, they should. But we know that the Democrats don't require it simply because you can look at who their nominee is. She has no qualifications, and that's the reason she's not talking about policy in this entire convention is nothing more than a focus on Donald Trump because they know they can't win when they actually tell the American people what they support. We have seen the absolute failure of Biden and Harris over the last four years and what Kamala Harris will do over the next four years if she were able to win would be even worse. Let's think about this for a minute, Jesse. Even Biden's own advisors who have worked with her for the last four years don't think she's capable of leading the country. She's been the laughing stock of this administration and now the Democrat Party and their allies in the media want to make it like she's our country's savior. It's total BS and it's absurd and they know that she doesn't have the ability to run the country. However, uh, that's a different story of what they're trying to sell to the American people this week. Thankfully, I think our people are way too smart and they're going to elect Donald Trump again in November. Do Republicans look like they're complaining when they say, oh, well, you know what, she doesn't ever talk about policy and, oh, the media just kind of lets her get away with not talking about policy? I mean, that might just be the reality. And that could happen all the way up until November. There has to be some other strategy to combat that. I think that this is one of the places where the Trump campaign is going to have to be the ones to hold their feet to the fire. We know the media is not going to do it. People like you and others on this network will. And the Trump campaign has to point out the big failures of the last four years and tie that to Harris. She is just as responsible as Joe Biden for the open borders, if not more, for the lack of our presence and respect on the world stage for inflation. And we know that everything she does is going to make each of those things infinitely worse if she were to be elected. That is what Republicans have to focus on. And when they do, I know that's exactly how we're going to win in November. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. This was actually a really quick interview. She normally sits there and talks for, I'd say, at least five, six minutes. So I guess they got to get her a real, a real brief show around. Uh, to go in chronological order, she responds to Holchel's claim that the men have to be qualified, the women don't. Maybe we should be more, I guess, lenient in that regard by saying that Harris is not qualified. I dispute that. Like, whatever you think of Harris as a politician, she does have political experience. I mean, she's been attorney general, U.S. senator, vice president. Contrast that with Trump, who was the first and so far only president to have either no government or military experience. And I just I don't see how that can be your candidate. But then you'll say the person who's held multiple other positions is not qualified. <laughs> Now, we get to a part where Sanders mentions that Harris is to blame, if not more so than Biden, for many of the issues going on, inflation and the supposed embarrassment on the world stage, um, the border. And I, I've said this repeatedly. The vice president has no legislative powers. The vice president cannot just decide, I will sign this bill and then I can override whatever the person who actually is in control of things wants to do. 
Um, Biden put her in a no-win situation as the supposed borders are. And because of that, it's made it easier for Republicans to assign the blame to her for something that she just really doesn't have any powers to control. But then you get over to like the nebulous stuff, right? Because, okay, at least with the with the borders are, I can say Biden did say that would be her you know, position, the, the thing that she would do. What is the argument for her being in control of the economy or U.S. foreign relations? I know when she gave her stupid DNC speech, Harris talked about how she called Zelensky and she warned him about Putin and she's working tirelessly in Gaza. You know, just look like different stuff that's just blatant lies. But what what actual powers does the VP have to be able to just override the influence of the president? Um None whatsoever. <laughs> and it's funny that the um, they're saying, like, she, she also stated that she believes Trump will win Arkansas. I mean, you know, that's like saying the sky is blue. Like, there's, there's no way in hell the Democrats are going to win any southern states besides probably Georgia and maybe, big, big maybe, maybe Florida and an even bigger maybe for Texas. Um, I, I do think that... Within the next, if it's not, and I don't think it will be this cycle, but if, if, if it's not this cycle, then probably either 2028 or 32, the Democrats will win Texas again. Uh, but so far, the only southern state that they have a shot, in my view, is Georgia because of the um, just the general population changes over there. So, but it's funny, it's like, I, I think this will be one of the states that Trump performs best in. Like, yeah, he will. It's not enough to win him the election, though. You guys aren't exactly that large. <sighs> it is funny. Arkansas went from being a state that... Because I was actually having a conversation with someone a, a few nights ago, and I mentioned this. Arkansas was won by every single successful Democratic presidential candidate, um, at least up until... 2008 like Obama didn't win Arkansas either time and neither did um, Biden but Clinton won it you know it's home state after all Carter won it Johnson and Kennedy both won it Truman I you know FDR like you just go back and it's like wow that state used to you know it just shows you how things have changed so dramatic, dramatic dramatically where even a state that had always gone for Democrats especially the ones that would win, you know, not even like 40 years ago now is just so red that you wouldn't even bother campaigning there if you have a D by your name. It's the tribalism of American politics really will be our uh, collective demise. But yeah, this interview was interesting because it's it, it's it's one of the, the governors, one of the hair parents to Trump, one of his sidekicks, um, saying that, you know, Harris will be so bad and so awful. She's again predicting that he's going to have this big giant victory or he's going to win, which... I know that as surrogates, they have to do the overconfidence thing, make their side look like they're strong. But I, I really, it, it makes watching this stuff after the election even funnier because you see who was right and who was wrong. And it can be comedic just how much they thought they were going to make it. And you get the reverse of that. But no, this this was a, this was another example of how these people are just, they, they're saying anything. Like if you listen to them, Harris can control the border, she can control health care, all this stuff as VP. She she is she's the most powerful vice president in American history if you listen to these guys. And it's sad because you know that the only reason they're claiming she has all this power is because of the election. Um just just like the attacks are getting to the point of absurdity.